Hello, my name is Hannah Bradley, and today I will be talking to you about spike pattern recognition using antiferromagnetic artificial knots. First, let's talk about antiferromagnets. As the result of their anti-parallel spin patterning, antiferromagnets, or AFM materials, have a natural frequency in the terahertz range. These frequencies can be excited by a spin current applying torque to magnetic sublattices of the AFM. The exchange energy between the sublattices changes, which allows for the terahertz frequencies. The spin current acts on both magnetic sublattices, causing them to rotate, but the anisotropy of the AFM causes this rotation to not be uniform. The rotating spins create a spin pumping signal, the magnitude of which is proportional to the rotational speed. The non-uniform rotation at a terahertz frequency results in a sequence of very intense, very short spin pumping spikes. The orientation of these sublattices can be described by using the angle phi, which is the angle between the yield vector and the easy axis. The derived equation for phi resembles the equation of a mechanical pendulum under a driving force, with the spin torque being the driving force. The most important part of this equation is that the exchange energy contributes an effective mass, which leads to the AFM oscillator having inertia. The oscillator can now act as an inertial particle under a driving force, with the driving force being the spin torque from the spin current. When the current is at a supercritical level, the AFM will act as an auto-oscillator, continuously outputting spikes. But consider the case where the driving force is at a subcritical level, and the spin current alone is not enough to send it into an oscillation. With an additional pulse of current, the oscillator can act as a neuron, overcoming the energy barrier and causing a single oscillation. At the bottom of this sinusoidal path, the change in the angle phi is the fastest, which results in an output spike due to spin pumping. Like all systems with inertia, the rate at which this particle goes through an oscillation is dependent on the strength of the driving force and the additional stimulus. Now, the oscillator can act as a very fast artificial neuron, always ready to go and to be set off by an external signal. They are unlike conventional artificial neurons because of this inertia. We need to be able to connect AFM neurons together such that they can be set off by one another. In our simulations, we use an arbitrary coupling matrix to determine the strength of coupling between the neurons. Linking up multiple of these AFM neurons in a chain allows the output of one neuron to act as the input for the next. In conventional artificial neurons, there is immediate reaction as a result of an input, but the inertia in AFM neurons caused there to be a delay between a single neuron receiving input and the resulting output. So now that we can create AFM neurons and we are able to link them together, the next step would be to start building neural networks capable of more complex functions. Constant coupling synapses are easy to implement. More complex variable synapses needed to train neural networks are not as easy. A new way to combat the need for complex synapses in neural networks is to make use of reservoir computing. In reservoir computing, there exists a reservoir made up of multiple neurons all interconnected with each other. However, all these connections are constant. This reservoir is able to receive input and do all calculations needed. The only thing left to do is to filter out the relevant information. This is the job of the output layer, and the only layer in need of more complex variable synapses. We make use of a system called Spike Pattern Association Neuron, or SPAN. The patterns were made from a 5x5 grid, where each cell corresponds to an input neuron that will fire if the pixel is black. The input neurons are directly connected to a single output neuron via trainable weights. Our goal is to create a neural network that will be able to recognize symbols made from this grid. When the correct symbol is supplied, the output neuron will spike at a desired time, and when the incorrect symbol is inputted, the output neuron will spike away from the target time. We achieve this goal through training the output weights. The SPAN algorithm is based off the Woodrow-Hoff or Delta rule. This rule uses the difference between the desired spike time and the actual spike time of a neuron to update the weights. After some manipulation, the weight should increase if the actual time is greater than the target time, stay the same if the time is the same, and decrease if the actual time is less than the target time. This figure shows how each synapse from the input neurons to the AFM span changes over each iteration of training. Each weight is initialized to a random value between 0 and 1. The span algorithm is modified to not allow any of the weights to become negative, which will ensure an easier implementation in hardware. As training progresses, it is clear to see how the weights change as they work to move the output spike towards the target time. After training, when the correct symbol is fed into the neural network, the AFM span will spike within a 10 picosecond time window of the target time. 
and when the incorrect symbol is inputted, the span will spike outside the target time window. Therefore, we have successfully trained the neural network to recognize symbols made from a grid. Multiple AFM spans can be connected to the same input neurons, but still be trained individually and without affecting each other. Each span would output a spike at the target time when its own correct symbol was inputted, while the others would output a spike away from the target time. However, with three spans all spiking at different times, the output can be unclear, so we construct an output layer that will filter out unwanted spikes. The output layer consists of thick synapses, thus preserving the reservoir computing requirement that only the synapses connected to the output layer are altered during training. However, these synapses are weak, such that a single spike will not be able to propagate to the next neuron. There must be two spikes at the same time in order to cause the postsynaptic neuron to fire. The clock neuron, shown in red, spikes at the target time. This spike joins the spike from the span corresponding to the inputted symbol to cause a strong enough signal for the postsynaptic neuron to fire, leading to a single output spike. Shown here is the output spike pattern of a three-span neural network. The blue, green, and magenta spikes correspond to spans trained to different symbols. You can see that the clock neuron, the red spike, spikes at the target time along with a single span. Because the other spans do not spike at the target time, there is only one output that corresponds to the recognized symbol. This neural network allows for multi-symbol recognition with a clear output in just a few hundred picoseconds. In summary, antiferromagnetic materials can resonate at a terahertz frequency range and can be used to create ultra-fast neurons with effective inertia. The SPAN algorithm makes use of the delta learning rule to train output spike times to target spike times. And finally, the AFM SPAN neural network can perform recognition tasks based on symbols made from an input grid of neurons. Thank you for your attention.